Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and this amazing series, I'm Aditya. In this video, we are going to talk about data fetching with Nux3. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, so I've already created a video about Nux3 data fetching. So I might not talk much in detail in this video. I'll just show, I'll just talk in brief, but other concepts I'll talk in detail. But if you want to check that video, I'll put description, description section, please do check that video and then it will be easy for you to understand how Nux3 data fetching works. So let's get started with this. Now here I have a simple products component which lists uh, the list of products. So here I'm getting a products data from some external API and for that I'm using Gurchi CMS which is a headless CMS and there we have a list all products or API which we can use to get products that we created using that headless CMS. Now, if I go over here, you see the traditional method would be that we use on mounted hook. Let me first also view three SPA and then we have product with some or some variable with some ref and then on mounted hook. Then we make an Axios or fetch API call and then we whatever data we get, we put in our, our ref of where ref variable in this case products value and we just render it over here. Apart from that, we generally used to have the process.env.sum key if we want to let's say in this case base url or app secret and then we will put it in our headers or in our base url now the good thing with nuxt is we can have runtime configurations which are kind of similar to that process.env where we can define the configurations in this case if the configurations are defined inside the public object but to begin with they are defined in the runtime object so in runtime object you can define the configuration so in that if you define as a public object inside a public object, the configurations like in a key value pair, then these configurations are accessible by client side JavaScript or any uh, browser side JavaScript. <laughs> so it's going to be again client side JavaScript. But in case if you want them to be accessed only by the server side JavaScript, because Nux3 comes with inbuilt node servers, so if you want to have them accessed during the server side rendering or only during the server side uh, computations, then you can have these parameters outside of this public object somewhere like this then these would be only accessible by the server-side JavaScript in Nuxt. Now, let's put it in public. I'll tell you why we are putting it over here. And how we are going to use it? Well, we just say we've used the use runtime config composable, which gives access to all the runtime configurations that we have defined in config.ts. And there we can access it through the public object because we have defined it inside a public object. And then we could say runtime config.public.base URL to get the base URL and app secret in from the public again. Now, if I go back to the page over here, you'll see if I reload this, everything works fine, but there was like a delay over there. So how can we solve this problem and make it server side render? Because the another thing, if I tell you over here, if I go back over here like this and view page source, let's say this page is very crucial for us in terms of SEO. Now, in terms of SEO, if you see nothing is rendered over here because that UL tag is or this list is rendered on a client side. So how can we make this SEO friendly and have it rendered on server side or how can we make it rendered faster, have it rendered on the server side? Well, for that, Nuxt provides us or Nuxt specifically provides us with powerful composables, which is one of them is use fetch. So let me comment this three, four lines over here and let me uncomment this part over here. Now, what is this use fetch? Well, use fetch is a composable which under the hood uses dollar fetch api so dollar fetch api is just a better performance efficient and and advanced or uh, it's not advanced but actually an easier way to write fetch apis so what dollar fetch so it uses dollar fetch under the hood and what we need to pass over here is the first parameter is going to be a url so in this case i'm passing it as a callback function but i can pass it like this as a string so it's going to be a url or some slug for your API, you have to make call to API for slash v1 for slash products. So I'm using this products API. So whatever it was before this, like HTTPS garchi.co.uk for slash API for slash v1 is a base URL, this case over here. Now we can do the same thing over here. We can, we already defined the base URL in config.ts. So we can pass the base URL as an option over here. So the second parameter for this use fetch composable is gonna be options which would be very similar to fetch API options. So here you can pass the headers, base URL. And if I show you the documentation over here, API, 
and then uh, use fetch, you will see there are a list of options. So all these options I have explained in the video, which I have done before. So I'll just go over here on in brief over them. So the key represents the like what you want to call it for this API request. Then we have the params, which requires to the query parameters. We have the body, which requires to the post request parameters or post request body. Then we have headers in case we want to pass any headers. Then we have base URLs and also we have server. So this is actually one of the important parameter. By default, it's set to true. That means whenever you fetch data, the data will be fetched during the server side rendered and you will see the data with the HTML. So in this case, now if I reload the page like this, so yes, yeah, so I haven't saved this. Yeah, now if we go back over here, you will see it's loaded with the HTML. It didn't went to that, uh, like it, it didn't disappear and then came back again. It was like instantly loaded like this. So if we also check the page source, I can just refresh this one. You will see that we will have now our list of products in this case, the items over here, and then it will also make it SEO friendly. So that's for use fetch. Now use fetch returns a certain list of features or parameters, actually not features, but the parameters. So one of them is a data parameter, which contains the data from the API. So I have alias this as products and error, which will again, will have certain errors if there are any errors from the API. Now, if you notice this data, is async data pro, uh, of type async data and it's also of type pref. Error is also of type ref. So suffice to say that these are kind of reactive variables and also we get a refresh function. So this refresh function helps us if we have pagination on our API. What if we want to add pagination in this? Uh, so to list all products, over here you will see that uh, we can pass the page chunk which is sites and inside this it has links so we can also pass the page number so we can utilize the api to have pagination but we cannot make like if we want to make it then in that case we have to write the use fetch again and then do the same thing again but Fortunately, we have this refresh function that comes with use fetch, which allows us to refresh the data whenever there is a change in any of the parameters, in this case, the page number. Now I'm going to just uncomment this part and add button click over here. We are calling this page fetch new function. And if I go over here and now what I need to do is I can either pass them over here or I can pass them as a params. So for now, I'll just pass them over here. I'm going to say size. So I just want three result at a time and page will be whatever is the page number. So page dot value, we just need to put equal to, that's perfect. Now if we go back over here and just refresh this page, so we have three uh, products. Now if I refresh this, you'll see it hasn't got me the new page because if I see the net in the network tab, if I see the URL, it's still showing me the page number of one. So to make it work, we need to convert this first parameter into a callback. So here, this will be a callback, which will return the URL for that uh, API. Now, if I go back over here, refresh the page and now try it again. So refresh and you'll see we have new products. One more time, refresh, that's great. New product, again, again, that's great. So we are getting the new products one after the other. So that's perfect. Now we can achieve the same thing using use async data. So what's the difference between use fetch and use async? Well, use async provides you more, I would say, uh, power in terms of using, uh, utilizing this data fetching. The reason being in use async data, you can pass the key, uh, which is the API key, which you can also pass in use fetch, and you can pass the callback the second parameter as a callback where you want to make the api request now good thing about this is actually use fetch is just compra it's a combination of user sync and dollar fetch api but here let's say we have this callback and we are making a fetch api request okay that's fine now if i'll just remove it from here and make this something like this now why i said it is powerful now in this case if you want to use user sync data let's say we want to make this api call after certain computation let's say we want to check some cookies or we want to do something before making the api call then we can use this callback to have that computation and then we can return the result 
of fetch API. So we can just say some function, some code before API call. And then we can have this fetch API where we can just send a request. Now it does the same thing like use fetch. It returns us these three or four parameters with data, error, refresh, and pending. They're all same. So we can also have something like this here. So data will be products. We can alias it like this and fetch over here. We can also copy this from here like this. Let's give this a try. So if I go back over here, now we are getting them all at once if we refresh this. So we get three products, refresh data, and everything works great. So use async actually, it's very similar to use fetch and it has also same options like use fetch. So if I go to the documentation over here, uh, API, and then use async data over here, you'll see the parameters are very similar. We can also pick what data we want and we can also either have it run on server or on client. We can also make it lazy. So it's very similar to use lazy async and for fetch also it's use fetch or use lazy fetch is similar to use fetch lazy flag set to true. And what that does is when you use use async or use fetch, the navigation is blocked. When I say navigation, so what happens is when you're fetching data, the overall flow of the page render is blocked till the data is received. But when you use lazy fetch or lazy async, in that case, the flow is not stopped in terms of page rendering. And you have to handle the, uh, I would say, the conditions where the data is null. While in use fetch or use async fetch, the hand null data case is handled automatically. So that's the difference. So that's all in this video. In the next video, we will see how we can use server APIs or server routes within our Nuxt app. And we will see how we can have them call from the front end. So see you in the next video. Till the next time. Goodbye.